Every deck is made for standing on, but there's only one that's always had a way of standing out. So if you're looking to bring more style, comfort, and creativity to your life outdoors, call on the brand that's known for making the most in outdoor living. From decking, railing, and lighting to furniture, fencing, and framing, at Trex, we're engineering what's next in outdoor living. To learn more about all of the outdoor solutions Trex has to offer, call 1-800-289-TREX or visit trex.com. That's T-R-E-X dot com. Happy Friday morning, everybody. Glad you're with us. We're trying to get your weekend off to a good start. Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests will join us on the Shell Penzoil performance line. we got a good one's coming up in just a little bit. We're having a Marty party. Marty Smith is going to be here from the Traveling Marty Party uh, Podcast of America. Uh, he'll join us in just a little bit at the Belmont Stakes. Uh, but that's really one of three things that are going to be really amazingly happening potentially in three days. Last night, we had the end of the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, the Washington Capitals right. take home the Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we have the Belmont Stakes on Saturday, justified trying to win the Triple Crown for the second time in four years, and actually the second time in 40 years. And tonight, the NBA Finals could come to a close in Cleveland, although all of us are hoping for at least a few more games to yes. keep the entertainment going. The games have been very competitive. We're calling it potentially the most competitive sweep in NBA Finals history. By the way, when they were down 3-0 last year and it went to Game 4 and, and Cleveland won, it was Kyrie Irving yes. who dropped in 40. Yes. In that one, to get him their one win. Not available Mm-mm. today. No, he's uh, not. With that in mind, ESPN ABC uh, play-by-play voice Mike Breen now joins us on the Shell Penzoil performance line, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Penzoil Synthetics today. Mike, always good to talk with you. The last time I talked with you, we were in New York for the Paul McCartney concert, so it's been a while. Uh, g- good. To- Hello, my gray-haired brethren. Yes, there exactly right. Hey, if the two choices are gray and gone, I'm taking gray every time, my friend. <laughs> Um, how you doing? Hey, Mike, how are you? Good, Mike. How are you, buddy? So we have good, been good. calling this the most competitive potential sweep in, in finals history. Because <laughs> every game, it, it's sort of been there down the stretch, and then the Warriors have found a way to pull away. Are we in any way uh, close on that? Oh, I think so. That's why it's, to me, that's why it's so disappointing. It's 3 0. It should be, it should be 2 1. We should be talking about a potentially classic series. Um, that's the disappointing part. Uh, because they really are. I, I, I thought Cleveland would play better than most would, uh, but I figured they'd get a win or two. It's a shame because it's, uh, it, it could have been great. Who knows? Who knows what we're going to see tonight? Maybe Cleveland does what they did a couple of years ago and makes it a series. So there's always hope for that. We always root for seven game series. Are, are we still at the point with Golden State? Not, not so much because we'll see the potential sweep here that this is going to be the team to beat for a couple of years, even though when I go back to the West Coast Conference Finals, that went seven games and Houston was actually up in that series? Mike, you know as well as anybody, you can never tell. It, it, how many times have we seen over the time where a team, a young team, uh, or at least their core is young, um, they win a championship, we say they're going to be in the finals for years to come, and something happens. Right. Guy gets tired of being with a certain group. Guy wants to all of a sudden be the man. Uh, injuries, which obviously we hope uh, doesn't happen. Sometimes selfishness creeps in. It's hard to predict, but right now this group is still playing so well together. They're still sacrificing. Uh, they still enjoy winning so much. Um, that it's going to be hard to imagine they're going to break up. There's a couple of contract things coming up, but I don't think it's going to be an issue for this group. So I do think they're going to be there, although I do think the Rockets are going to be strong next year. And depending on where LeBron James goes next year, that can completely switch um, where the power is going to be in the NBA. Uh, no question about it. Mike Breen with us, uh, ESPN ABC uh, play-by-play voice for the NBA Finals. And there's a lot to get into in what you just said, Mike, which makes this so much more compelling. Even after the finals are over, the NBA offseason is always the greatest. Uh, our own Rachel Nichols asked Kevin Durant about his options, and that's one of those players that, that we're talking about that, that might be moving on from Golden State. And he seemed to be pretty adamant that he was going to stay with the Warriors. Um, and, and I think we've got this construct now with Golden State that where people are buying into the idea of success more than they are with money. I mean, Clay Thompson was asked about this earlier. He said, yeah, I could probably make more money somewhere else, but I get paid really well and we win. I mean, if, if you're a Golden State Warriors fan, this has to be music to your ears, what you're hearing from these guys. I think, Trey, that's been a change in the NBA in recent years where it used to be. A guy wouldn't say, all right, I'm going to go to a team to try and win a championship until much later in his career, way down the end, last few years. 
it's different now. I, I think today's younger players really do put more of a premium on winning than they do being an all-star. You know, for a long time, you could use the phrase that players define their games by how many points they scored, at least young players. Today, players define their games by how many wins you get, how many championships you compete for. And I think that's been a change just in the overall mindset of the younger players, plus the fact that, okay, if you stay with your team, you're going to make more money than if you go to another team, your original team. But what's the difference now for some of these guys? All right, I'm only going to make $110 million as opposed to $150 million. Now, that's a big disparity, but at the same point, you're settling now for an unbelievable amount of money. So I think it makes that choice a little bit easier for a lot of young players. You know, sitting there doing the broadcast with a couple of guys who, who have coached and one obviously played as well, and Mark Jackson and uh, Jeff Van Gundy. What do they th- do? They think if if it's over tonight for the Cavaliers that LeBron is going to move on to another team. You know what? We've talked about this last night at dinner, actually, and it's. Um, yeah, you know, we could speculate as much as anybody. They don't have a feel one way or another. I mean, they could guess, but it all depends on what his priority is. Uh, is that priority to to win the championship? We know that's one of them. But is the priority to do what his wife and his kids want to do? You know, if they say, "Hey, dear," or "Hey, dad," uh, we want to stay in Cleveland. Um, he just might stay. And I know most people don't think that's going to happen. But have you guys noticed? Because I feel that. In the last couple of years, he's more at peace with himself. He's not as worried about what people are saying about him anymore. He, you know, he won his two titles in Miami. He, he became the hero of forever in Cleveland. And does he want to win more championships? Yes. But he's not as, I don't think he's consumed by what people think of him in terms of counting the amount of titles. He's very comfortable at where he is and what he's become and his place in, in league history. And, Mike, uh, that's what's interesting about this, because at this time where, you're right, I think he's at that place, I think he's finally getting the recognition that some were so begrudgingly willing to give him because of what he's been able to do in his 15th year, because of the team that he has around him that has gotten to the NBA Finals. I made this point earlier, I'd love to get your perspective on it, as a guy who's covered the NBA for so long. To me, LeBron getting this Cleveland Cavaliers team, which, by the way, has been remade, what, four times in the regular season through the postseason alone, uh, is, the, is the equivalent to Michael Jordan getting a Bulls team to the finals before Scottie Pippen and all those other guys showed up. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, it's extraordinary what he did this year. And again, because of the, the roster over how all, all the drama, um, the fact that you know he had to play, although he wanted to, he played every single game for the first time in his career, and the amount of responsibility or burden, whatever word you want to use, that he had night in and night out, in a year where many thought that he wasn't going to get there because you had some pretty good teams in the East, for him to go through you know, three elimination games before getting to the finals, um, it's incredible what he did. So I would absolutely agree with that. And, and that's, again, all part of... Him just adding to what he has and where he's at this comfort level in terms of his place in the league history. Uh, so, again, we'll see. It could end tonight as Mike Breen is with us. We'll call in the NBA Finals on ABC. Does a great job for ABC and ESPN all throughout the year. We just uh, heard the, the call by John Walton of the Caps uh, Radio 24-7, and it, gave us, it gives us goosebumps every time we hear it. Uh, have, you, have you heard the call, by the way, Mike? Have you heard the call of, of John Walton? I sure have. Yeah, it, it's amazing. So as a guy who knows you're going into a game tonight where there may be a potential, you know, clinching scenario, do you what goes through your head? Do you run through some thoughts as the whole process plays out or you just let it happen organically? No, I think you have to you have to give it some thought in terms of what you want to incorporate in in the final call. If you don't, I think you're doing an injustice to to the viewers because you have to you have to come up with some kind of summation. I, I don't think you you, you script it. Uh, I don't think you rehearse it, but you have to have an idea of what you want to say and then try and make it in a in a spontaneous way, if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, it, it does. It does. We, yeah. we absolutely get it. And you know what? We're all hoping for a longer series, so we hope you don't have to make that call yeah. tonight. <laughs> but, but if you do, I know it will be spectacular. Well, my, one of my favorite things every year is is when the buzzer sounds for the final game and a team wins a title. Here you have these these world class athletes who make millions of dollars. All of a sudden, they act like little kids. The yeah. the uh, the expression of joy that you see, um, it's like none other. It really isn't because they're all they're all 
again, they're, they're these special players who, who carry themselves a certain way, and then that all goes out the window, and they're like little kids on Christmas morning. Yeah. It's very cool. It's like uh, Kevin Garnett, anything is possible. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's great. Well, Mike, well, listen, we're, we'll be watching tonight. We'll be listening. Uh, enjoy the game, and I hope you get an a epic call if it is, and quite frankly, I'm hoping you'll do that three more games from now. <laughs> Thanks, Trey. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, Mike. Anytime, Appreciate it. Mike Breen does such a great job. Yeah, he does. Yeah. I would imagine if the game starts to go in Golden State's favor tonight, I'll be interested to hear if Jeff yeah. and Mark give start give to, to give some speculation on what they might I think might happen with LeBron. Because imagine if they lose tonight. You yeah. know what everybody's going to be waiting for? Yeah. Walking down that tunnel is LeBron take that jersey off. You right, know exactly. What are we going to go? What are his facial expressions? What is he doing? Is he hugging people for a last time? It's going to be amazing. It's going to be unreal yeah. if they're losing that game to watch what, what his actions are. And again, the speculation will begin. And sometimes, I'm telling you, like the playoffs are great. <laughs> But sometimes the regular season can drag. The off season in the NBA is phenomenal. Do you think now? I, I Cavs will go out and play this one at a time. But right. w- I think even they have to understand this has never been done before. Uh, right. Done before. Oh, and what one thirty one or one thirty two, whatever. It's it is. never happened in so, any level, let alone the final. Down three nothing. Do you, th- nothing to do you think back. LeBron has not decided where? But do you yeah. think he has decided he is leaving? Cleveland. Well, at you know, this point? we played that soundbite from earlier, and it was it was a the very end of it. He says to beat. He was, first of all, he was praising Golden State, uh, and then he sort of said, "Look, and now everyone's trying to figure out what is the collective basketball minds that need to come together uh, to try and find a way to beat this team." Now, much in the same way, Mike Breen just told us we'd be doing our viewers a disservice, or he'd be doing the viewers a disservice if he wasn't thinking about the possibility of what that call would be. Before it happens, much in the same way, I think LeBron would be doing himself a disservice if it hasn't crept into his mind at some point. Okay, if this ends tonight, I need to really start thinking about what happens next. So I think, yeah, it's only human. It's only natural for that to creep into your thoughts a little bit. Because the first thing he has to think about is is if he stays in Cleveland, can he still get to the finals, correct? Right. You know, until you're thinking about Boston, who gets Kyrie and Gordon Hayward back, and you think about Philadelphia, where Markel Fultz maybe is healthy for the whole year. Ben Simmons has got a year under his well, belt. Embiid. Obviously, you have Embiid. Toronto, I don't think, I don't think LeBron worries about. You can, well, you'll, <laughs> although, although, no, he doesn't. Although, yeah. if you go to, you could also tell Philadelphia, hire this guy, and we'll talk. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of interesting scenarios. Again, for, selfishly, we'd like to see more games. We hope it doesn't happen. But the reality is it could very much come to a close tonight. Okay, this hour of Golik and Wingo brought to you by La Quinta. Ins and Suites, book at LQ.com and win at business. So again, we're in this great three-day stretch. Finals of the Stanley Cup ended Thursday. Finals on the NBA could end tonight. And we could have a triple crown winner for the second time in just 40 years on Saturday. And that means it's time for a Marty Party. Golgan Wingo with you on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. The one-man celebration. The Marty Party continues. <laughs> Marty Smith. Well, good morning, boys. That's right. The party's in town. Marty Smith's America. The podcast downloaded and subscribe on the ESPN app. Oh, yeah, man. Rocco's Tacos. Palm Beach, Florida. Rocco's Taco Tacos. Taco Tuesday. All in on Marty yeah. is a Marty Party. He is. Good work right there, brother. He just puts a smile on your face. There's just no way about it. As uh, we are having a chance at a triple crown for the second time since 2015, American Pharaoh ended the drought that last took place in 1978 with Affirmed uh, winning the triple crown. And now we have a chance with Justify. And we don't need to justify any time we have Marty Smith on the show. We're just happy to have him. Marty Smith's America, the podcast, uh, joins us. New episodes on Monday. All right, Marty, uh, listen, first and foremost, how many nights have you slept in your own bed in the last month and a half? This is a guesstimate, Trey, but I would say six or seven, something like that. Unbelievable, man! You, you know what we always say: don't walk away from a heater at the at the gamble table. Oh boy, you are on the all-time sports traveling <laughs> heater I've ever seen. I am. Look, man, it's the dream. I was just in the Grand Canyon with Scott Frost, right? I think we discussed yes. that two days ago. Two days ago, I went down to College Station, Texas. And, uh, we're, we're, you know, within the horse racing theme here, we went down to this ranch in College Station. I met up with Jimbo Fisher. Of course, he's now the head coach of Texas A&M to discuss what is to come for him and the expectations for him and the pressure that accompanies a $75 million contract. We got on some horses and rode through a ranch. They pay me for this. Boys, I get paid for this. 
It's incredible. Uh, and you do it very well, by the way. And we all know what Justify will get paid for after Justify retires. We, we talk about that a whole <laughs> yeah. lot of, of, of certainly what they can do. But as far as this race, uh, Marty, what's the talk there about oh, not get, uh, get, winning this race to get the Triple Crown? This is the longest race of the three. And any, you know, yep. trepidation uh, for Justify in this scenario? No, but it's not. It's certainly not a foregone conclusion by any stretch. He is the morning line favorite. I did just talk to uh, Bob Baffert, his trainer, for quite some time about his thoughts and his emotions and what he's seen from Justify. And one thing about Baffert that is really striking to me, as it pertains specifically to Justify, is how open and honest he is about how dominant this horse is. He simply says it. He's just better than the rest. He's better than the competition. But in order to win the Triple Crown, Justify is going to have to beat more horses than any horse in history has in order to win the Triple Crown. The most any horse has won in the three races combined, excuse me, beaten in the three races combined is 32 horses. If Justify wins it, it'll be 35 horses total. So this is a dominant horse. Baffert is supremely confident. He said when they walked in here the other day and he took Justify into the barn area, the other horses were hollering at him. They were making all kinds of noise as if to welcome this championship caliber peer to the event. And so, look, it's a great horse. Everyone seems to expect that he will win, but it's not going to be easy. A mile and a half in your third leg of the Triple Crown is extremely taxing on the athlete. It certainly is. As Marty Smith from Marty Smith's America, the podcast, joins us on Golik and Wingo. Again, new episodes uh, coming up on Monday. Uh, listen, one of the things that's been really interesting about Justify's run to the potential Triple Crown is the weather. It was a sloppy track at the Kentucky Derby. It was a sloppy track uh, at the Preakness. There's the potential for rain Saturday. How much do you think the the weather maybe not being as sloppy might have an impact on this race? Because one thing we know for sure, Justify is a mutter. Oh, he's a beast. And it seems like every time I show up at a horse track, it pours rain. But today <laughs> it is stunning. I actually I threw shoes away after the Kentucky Derby. How about I got to watch the Kentucky Derby actually on the racetrack. I didn't know that until we walked onto the racetrack and my producer goes, this is where we're watching the race. It was crazy. Uh, but I just talked to Bodie Baffert, Bob's 13-year-old son. This is a meteor, meteor – what's the word? Meteorologist. I always want to say meteorological – yeah. I'm going to use the word meteorological. I don't think it's a word, but we're going to call it a word. He is a wonder kind. He studies the Doppler. His forecast is always right. And he just said, I just heard him say it two minutes ago, that you don't even need to bring your poncho. We're going to have a beautiful day. It's going to be a wonderful day for a race to the coronation for Justify, he hopes. Certainly Bob, his father hopes. Uh, so I think the weather here is going to be okay. There is certainly a chance. But I think this is going to be a beautiful day tomorrow i hope so i don't want to throw away any more suits <laughs> marty from from the general public when we look at sports we look at a guy like russell westbrook last year when he averaged a triple double everybody was like wow well they averaged a triple double again this year and everybody was like oh, okay he did it again we just had a few a couple of years ago a triple crown winner so the the majority of the public watching this may be like Okay, we just had this. How about in the horse racing industry, where you have been for these three races? How big of a deal is this still to them? It's a huge deal. I mean, it just it doesn't happen. You know, it just it doesn't happen very often, as you said. I mean, American Pharaoh did it in 2015, and it was years and years, decades uh, since another horse had done it. And with Justify, there's also another unique variable statistically, that being if he does win the Triple Crown, He'll be just the second undefeated horse ever to win the Triple Crown. Seattle Slew did it in 1977, Jerry. Jerry Bailey, two-time Kentucky Derby champion, standing right beside me. Uh, so it just doesn't happen very often that this level of dominance shows up at the racetrack. So certainly everyone's aware of it. Certainly everyone is paying attention to it. And Baffert actually said this week that he feels like outside the horse racing community, it has draw drawn more interest because – the viewership knows it can happen, and they can witness history. And those fans, those peripheral fans who did not tune in to watch American Pharaoh in 15 will likely do so this time with Justify so that they can witness that history. All right, Marty Smith with us. Before we let you go, yes or no, does he get it? I think he does. Uh, 
again, I just looking at Baffert's body language and watching him discuss his horse, Justify will go out here on the track in just a bit for his final workout. It's amazing the confidence that Baffert has. Now, granted, he has done it before, and I just asked him in an interview I did with him, what's the value of the experience? And he said it is less pressure. Like, he didn't even blink. It is less pressure because I have gotten over that hurdle. But the, 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 the way that he speaks about Justify just gives me all the confidence in the world that this horse is superior, which is the word Baffert always use, uses, over the field. But again, to do it, he's going to have to beat a really, really impressive, talented, stout field if he's going to win that Triple Crown. We will find out on Saturday. Marty, we appreciate you being with us, and uh, hopefully you don't have to throw any more suits or uh, shoes away after what looks to be a clear day Saturday at the Belmont. Hey, I'm going to have to take out – I'm going to have to call you guys for a loan. <laughs> if it rains again, I'm going to send you guys a text, and y'all need you guys to wire me money. I can't keep throwing these clothes away. I'll just give you the expense code, and you can expense it at ESPN. You'll be fine. <laughs> All right, Marty Smith, <laughs> Marty Smith with us. We'll yeah, see that'll work. Yeah, we'll see what happens Saturday at the Belmont. Belmont's going to well, be great. It's going to be a lot of fun. Listen, the, the, the Belmont had to be the happiest out of all. And when we were watching yeah, the, the Preakness, winner. or trying to watch the Preakness, was I envisioned the Fog Bowl in 1988 yeah, that yeah, I played yeah. when the horses in disappeared Chicago. on the backstretch. But, you know, we'll see. Again, this is a longer race. And I know the strategy is different in a longer race. But you go to that last race, if if it was a longer race, Bravazo who took second, Correct. was coming up yep. on Justify. And if it was a longer race, now, as I said, you could have run it differently. You thought may have passed Justify. We'll see in this with this longer distance. That's what makes the Belmont the toughest. It is the last of the three. It is the longest of the three. And that's why every horse ever will fall down behind Secretariat. Because I think he won the Belmont by... 433 lengths. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was it was the longest, toughest race. And he was like, hold my beer. Yeah. <laughs> he just went and crushed it. By the way, speaking of holding beers, if you haven't seen it on Twitter, expert trolling level by Ovechkin and the Caps. Oh, yeah. Uh, walking through the MGM hotel yeah. lobby with the Stanley Cup. It's just awesome. It's fantastic. You win it in Vegas, right? man. And, come on. And the stories every year that come out of what happens to the Cup when it travels with the team. Yep. It's unbelievable. Ovechkin and company already getting started on that. Hey, everyone. Mike Golick here. Support for the Golick Wingo podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. At Trex, we know there's a place for wood in your backyard. We recommend the fire pit. But when it comes down to choosing the right material for your next deck, look no further than the superior beauty and durability of the world's number one premium decking brand. Trex delivers the look of wood without all of the work and the worry, and it's made from 95% recycled materials, which makes it the right choice for your backyard 100% of the time. To learn how to make Trex your next deck, visit trex.com to order samples. Golik and Wingo, ESPN Radio and ESPN News, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Penzo performance line. We'll get into what's going on with Julian Edelman real quick, but we've been talking about the Terrell Owens situation all morning right. long, and he's turning it down. And Chris Carter put out that tweet, I'm even happier to go knowing he won't be there now. Yeah. Uh, and then we found out one of the reasons maybe why Chris Carter Yeah, based off way. an article in 2016 that T.O. That was quoted as saying that that uh, Chris Carter begged his way and into the Hall of Fame. And I knew known he had said that, but I, it just seemed like Chris, I still thought, would look past that and, but man, I guess you, you never know. Yeah. You know, with people, if that obviously is the impetus for him saying that, but, uh, T.O. was again, these guys and they admit it are the most diva football players there are at that position. Wide redivas. So it doesn't, when you reach the highest level, individual level of getting voted into the Hall of Fame, is it still there? Yeah. Does Randy Moss still feel, well, I'm better than these guys because I got voted in at year one? And does T.O. feel, well, I'm better than C.C. because I got voted in at year three and right. he got voted in at year six? I mean, it would blow my mind, but, but then again, I can't go there right. because I'm not at that level. 
So I, I were to mean get on my I, level. Is I would what think everybody saying. would be. We're all in the same hall together. We're all yeah. by the same team. But even we know in the hall, we always talk about there are levels. But I wonder how much players feel about. Oh, I'm in a different level than that guy because yeah. I got voted in earlier. I have no idea because I don't know that feeling. I, I would just assume, and I may be assuming incorrectly, that there's first ballot guys and then there's everybody else. Right? W- that, that, I, that would that would seem to. Be I the would cutoff. think so as well. I yeah. would agree with that. All right, so we'll have much more on that, including a very interesting question that we're putting out yes. there on Twitter. Uh, but first, let's get to this. And there's the other news uh, uh, in the NFL. Uh, both Adam Schefter and Field Yates here reporting that wide out for the Patriots, Julian Edelman is facing a four-game suspension for violating the NFL's performance-enhancing substances policy, according to league sources. is currently under appeal. Now, we have seen uh, appeals overturned. Richard Sherman's uh, Adderall. situation with Adderall was mm-hmm. overturned. Uh, but if it is not appealed, or uh, not overturned, rather, Edelman would forfeit about five hundred grand in base salary. And there's a lot to get into here, Mike, and, and I want to get your your opinion on this because here's my thought. Julian Edelman is trying to come back from a torn ACL that he suffered last August in preseason in a game against the Lions. Uh, Julian Edelman is 32, and he's entering his 10th season in the NFL, which means time is running out. Yeah. Okay? I mean, yeah, it's glorious that Tom Brady's going to play till he's 74, but that's at quarterback. Julian Edelman, as a shifty slot receiver, doesn't have that luxury. Mm-hmm. So you have to do... Whatever it takes to get back on the field as quickly as you can. And this is probably going to ruffle some feathers, but I am not going to kill a guy for if it's medically by a doctor saying, here, if you do this, this will get you back on the field of play faster and you will be able to continue to continue your career. Well, I'm not going to sit there and be with all this finger wagging. How dare you? If, if you're, if, first off, let me just say, if you're trying to separate him illegally buying PED somewhere and a doctor medically clearing it, Disagree completely. Okay. Because if a doctor still prescribes it for you, you know it's illegal. Correct. And you take it. Correct. There's no difference. I, I, I'm the, not. The, there's no difference. Right. Okay. You know what I'm no, saying? No, yeah, but I, you, no. If I, you're knowingly ingesting something that's illegal, whether correct. a doctor prescribed it or you went and got it at, at your gym, you yeah. know, it doesn't matter. To your point, though, I will never. You and people get. When I, I used uh, uh, steroids back in, again, after I got my shoulder reconstructed in 88, they weren't testing for it then. Right. But it was illegal to use, but you, it had to be more of a paper trail, which we see happening in baseball sometimes. But you didn't get tested for it. And I used it, and it got me back quick from, yeah. from shoulder reconstruction. And uh, people always ask me, would you would you have used it in dr- and when, when there was testing? And I said, I don't know. I can't answer that. I wasn't in that situation. Right. Had I had that surgery if I played 10 years later and I had that surgery, would I take the chance and roll the dice in the off season when they do, uh, uh um, the, the T- random, testing. random and, testing? And this was a random test. Right, right. Yeah. Would I, would I take that chance? Would I roll the dice? Yeah. I guess if you really think I got no shot of getting back if I don't, and that's a personal decision. And it's, and it's against the rules. So you know what you're doing. I'm certainly not going to judge somebody on that. I did it. So I'm not going right. to sit there and say you're wrong for doing it. If you want to do it today, it's a roll of the dice though. Yeah. It's an absolute roll of the dice. And I have no problem if the punishment is unbelievably harsh. It, it will make you think. There's no doubt about it, which is what's intended if you do something illegal is to make you, is to deter you from doing it. If you want to roll the dice, it's your choice. Listen, we're in a totally different era, or not era, but area right now. These last two weeks have been one of the two times where you know a test is coming. Correct. It is the recreational drug testing time. Which happens at OTAs and then it happens at training camp and happened one of the two times. You know it's coming. So you fail now. We, we call it the idiot test. You, you know yes. it's coming. Marijuana and all that. And I don't care what you think about marijuana. And I agree it's going to be legalized everywhere at some point. Correct. And hopefully if it is, you know, if we continue to show these leagues that it can be used for pain and can be and used better than being addicted then we to should. opioids. And that's fine. But right now it's illegal. Right. So if you if you get caught, then you get caught. It's your own fault because most of the guys are still smoking it for for the high of it, and, and Correct. which which their choice. But there's a price to pay for that. Yes. If you choose to do it now with PEDs, it's different. It's random throughout the year. So you roll the dice, and and if you want to take that chance, that's up to you. In, in any sport, I said this in any sport. That's why I said most of the PED users in baseball are minor leaguers or low major leaguers trying to get the big deal. Minor leaguers trying to get to the majors to get the big deal, or guys who are just in the majors who are decent trying to get the big contract. We see the big names, but 
Go Google all the names and tell me how many of them you recognize. Yes. Because there's people you never heard of because they're trying to get that big deal. We only print the big names for you because that's a discussion point. Oh my God. Wow. That big name did it. But it's the, it's the guys who aren't big names yet that are doing it to try and get to that point, especially to get the big guaranteed contract. Yeah. And I want to be clear about what I was saying. I'm not saying it's one thing to get it from the gym and that's different. It's, it's, it's illegal either right, way. Right. What I'm saying is, if if a doctor says this works, I don't have any problem with the guy saying, fine, let's go down that road. Because I have a limited window, and I want to make sure I maximize my right, ability so Again, to you're still rolling the dice. No question. Whether it's the guy who, who's, a, who's a great PED you know, user and yeah. knows all about him and say this will work, or a doctor that says this will work, you know you're putting something in or on your body that's illegal. And those are put up there in all the, all the locker rooms <laughs> right. across the NFL. Oh, oh, you, it's you right know there. It. Now, Edelman's appealing. Yeah. We don't know what it is he got yeah. caught for. It's not um, a masking agent because a masking agent would, right. would be two games. This is a PD. It's Again, four games. Understand the difference. Masking your yeah. diuretic is is a is a two game. Just as Trey said, this right. is he got pop for a PED. So we don't know what it is, and the appeal is going on right now. So we'll see. And again, there's another layer to this story that we'll get into a little bit uh, a little bit later with Edelman. That is a continuation of some of the kerfuffles that happened last year with the New yes. England Patriots. Kerfuffles. Hey, it's one of my favorite mm-hmm. words. Thirty for Thirty podcasts, by the way, have returned. Subscribe to Thirty for Thirty podcasts right now in the Listen tab of the ESPN app or on Apple Podcasts. Brought to you by Delta, where it's our goal to connect your life in the air to your life on the ground. And we're reminding you that the NBA Finals on ESPN Radio. Tune in tonight for Game 4 as LeBron and the Cavs host Durant and the Warriors, presented by Indeed. Coverage begins at 8 Eastern on most ESPN radio stations. Coming up, much more on the Terrell Owens situation, the other half of the Julian Edelman story, and a name change that some people will not be cool with. We'll get to that. I'm a shower curtain, and I do one thing. Keep water from leaking everywhere. So you see why I feel useless compared to Geico, who does so much more. Like, not only could Geico save you money, but they've been around for over 75 years. And they give you 24-7 access online, over the phone, or on the Geico app. And they've got a 97% customer satisfaction rating. They do all this while I have to listen to this chucklehead. Oh, good, he stopped. Oh, great, an encore. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Oh, Canada. James Pacton, who hails from Ladner, British Columbia, threw a no-hitter Tuesday in Toronto. We now have three no-hitters this year in three different countries. That is crazy. One in California. Mm-hmm. And California is not a country. It's a state. I, I mean, uh, you, you, uh, yeah, the United States of America. America. Stanzik is so quick to pounce. We are the pettiest show in, in, it's unbelievable. in radio. There's no question about there, it. There's no sticking together and backing one another. Everybody has a knife in their hand, and when can they put the shiv in one of our own people's backs? But he's not the only one. Uh, no, he's I, not. We all do it. Oh, we, I know. We, are, we are the pettiest show ever. We really are. We enjoy our pettiness. Sports Center brought to you by DXL. Guys, if you're built like a linebacker or a power forward, finding clothes that fit has never been easy until DXL. DXL was built for XL guys with over 100 brands and an unrivaled fit starting at size XL. So you get to your nearby DXL store. Check them out online at DestinationXL.com. Built to fit. Built XL DXL. All right, Golik and Wingo with you. Reminding you, baseball season is underway. <laughs> Tune in tomorrow night for a crosstown rival as the Mets host Aaron Judge and the Yankees presented by Barbasol Razors. Coverage begins at 6.30 Eastern on ESPN Radio. ESPNRadio.com and the ESPN app. And we'd like to welcome our yes, V we Foundation uh, folks in here. Again, the, the bidders and the V Foundation, we opened it up to have a barbecue uh, at my son's house. We're going to trash the house. Trash the house. That's yeah, exactly right. And Jennifer and Chris, who were nice enough to make the incredible donation. They're here from Greenville, the South Carolina. V Foundation. Uh, so we're going to go after the show. We're heading over to Mike's. Mike's already gone over there to try and clean up, which means... My wife has gone over there to do say, he's doing none of the that. real cleaning. So they're here and they get a barbecue. Jennifer, by the way, has run three marathons. You're yes. a marathon runner. She's she's done wonderful things in her life, but she's already made one tragic mistake. And what's that? She wore white pants to a barbecue. Oh, that's, that's going to be a that's problem. Point. I'm that's just saying, point. and look, knowing Jennifer, I'm just telling you now, I've been around the Golics long yeah. enough. I've known yeah. Mike for 15 years. There will be spilling. You will have Big problems with the white pants. Yeah, I'm just that's telling you that point. right now. I didn't even think of that. You should have just worn some splattered pants because yeah, that's what's yeah. going to happen. Maybe so, we'll give her a, a piece of plastic or something. We'll lay plastic <laughs> you get a bubble wrap, house. Jennifer. So yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> You'll be like Bob yeah. Baffert at the Kentucky yeah, Derby exactly where he had right. a plastic bag on him. Going to be bad. We are not going to plastic bag you. Okay, no, yeah, no. we will pay. We will pay for new pants if the white yeah. pants get destroyed. Uh, you go ahead and pay for it. I'm not paying. We'll get Marty. Nice pants. We'll get Marty Smith to pay. Yeah, there you go. We'll put it on Marty Smith's expense account and we'll get that all taken care of. We do appreciate everything you did to get here and really. 
it's very, very cool. It is. And uh, she's run, again, three marathons, which is three more yeah. than I will ever run. And, and Chris is on the all-standard round team, and we're happy <laughs> yeah. about that. Oh, boy, Chris. Well. Good job. Good job out of you, Good bud. Good job. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that's going to be part of what's going to be a great weekend. Mm-hmm. Stanley Cup Finals ended right. last night. NBA could end tonight. we got the Belmont. we got the barbecue today. But, Mike, yeah. there is something going down that is surrounding some mystery, and I'm not sure you're going to be okay with it. I, I It's just going to be weird at first, but I think I understand it because we've seen it in other places as well. Okay. So, IHOP. International again, House of Pancakes. Right. I mean, who has an enjoy? I am a unbelievable fan of IHOP. We've no seen you chow it. pancakes before love, in a previous incarnation I of love bre- IHOPs, the Waffle Houses, breakfast places. I love them. Yep. I love them. So, again, International House of Pancakes. They're flipping the P. Yeah. They're flipping the P to a B. So it's going to be I hop it was very easy. I hop. Now I hob. Yeah. I hob. So I bob. International House of Pancakes, they want to be known for more than pancakes, so they're changing the B. The assumption is it's going to be breakfast, but they're yeah. kind of leaving that hang out there and right. saying what do you think the B is going to stand for? Well, well you they know, could go nuts. International House of Burgers. See International House of Bagels. See, here's why I International don't, House of Barbecue of Bacon. Bacon. International House of Betrayal. Stan success because he's the most bitter person in the world. Oh he's God. the most unhappy man. That's here's ever why lived. they're not going to name an individual food. Yeah, because that's what they just stopped doing with pancakes. Correct. So they're going to go general, just like Dunkin' Donuts is going to Dunkin', right? Yeah, they're changing so, it just to Dunkin'. Because they offer more than donuts. And people are dri- it's driven by the coffee and the breakfast yeah, sandwiches absolutely. as much as the donuts. Now. IHOP wants to be known for more than just pancakes, so I, I think it's going to be International House of Breakfast. Or maybe International House of Brunch. Could it be brunch? Because they do serve, obviously, other food and, and all maybe, day, so maybe they don't want to solely be breakfast. Maybe, maybe it will be different Maybe B-word. it's a total makeover. International House of Bougainvillea. You're an idiot. Yeah, probably. They, maybe they're idiot. just going down the flower market. What other? What are the things? Could the B stand what for? What could it stand for? Because because uh, we want, breakfast puts them in a box too. It, yes, but it but it, it's a little broader than pancakes. But it still only defines you by that one part of the day. Correct. But but let me ask you this, and I know your answer. All right. You have three your three meals: breakfast, mm-hmm. lunch, and dinner. Mm-hmm. Of those three, which one could you eat? All breakfast. three times. Breakfast, right? I eat breakfast. Breakfast for dinner is one of the greatest things of all time. Totally agree. Actually, breakfast for lunch is one of the greatest also things. Also, totally time. agree. Yeah. So while it's probably going to be breakfast, we really need to put on some outside the box thinking here of what it could be. International House of Boxes. Boxes? I'm just throwing out what B words boxes? here. Boxes. And maybe they're totally changing their t- entire product line. They're going in a whole different direction. Idiot. They've been around for 60 years. Uh, International House of... Uh, don't, don't. You're just saying dumb things now. Probably. What are you, brick all of a sudden? Yes. Yeah. Uh, International House of Bratwurst. Oh, Come on. Let's go. International House of... Uh, I got a minute to kill here. Let's figure this out. International House of... Uh, I think it's going to be breakfast. It's probably going to be breakfast. International House of Bagels. That's that's too... No, no. It's not going to be bagel. I, I, can you even, I don't think you can get a bagel International there. House of Business. They're just... They're going after IBM. They're going to be a business they're school. Going at, they're throwing it all out. They're going to be a, a, a new college. International House of Business that's going to help international business people get their MBA. There it is. Ah, outside the box thinking. Right? How, what do you got? What do you got, Stan? We got a merger with Brugers. No, that's bagels. It's too specific. We've already gone down that road. Right? International House of Business. I'm going with that. See, I I, I like that you're trying different things. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm just. But let's again point. go with Occam's Razor here. Yeah. What's what's the simplest That's choice? Two Occam Razors reference yeah. to the Golic yeah. family this morning. That is impressive. I'm going with breakfast. I am too. Coming up, a busy final hour for us, including Rascal Flatts yeah. joining us in studio. Woo-hoo! I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to Geico. I feel like a whole new person. Disclaimer, you will not become a whole new person. This is impossible. You might be able to join a gym or diet program, buy a new wardrobe, get hair implants, but your DNA and physical form will remain the same. GEICO waives any and all liability if you attempt to become a new person, except a cyborg. If you choose to become a half-human, half-cybernetic organism with lasers for eyes, the GEICO legal team would be cool with that because, quote, laser eyes are pretty sweet. Pew, 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 end quote. GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15%. Glad you're with us on a Friday morning. Hope you're getting your work day or your weekend off to a good start. Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN News, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Penzoil performance line. That, of course, Rascal Flats, and we're delighted to be say Rascal Flats will be joining us in yeah. studio in just a little bit. Going to be on campus. Look forward to having the guys in here. Um, they are uh, <laughs> they are purveyors of ESPN. They've been here before. And Six, I hear 16 number one hits. Yeah. Six, I mean, come on. It's pretty good. 
Pretty good. Jeez. Not too shabby. Uh, so we're glad you're with us. We got them coming up. We'll also have Teddy Atlas coming up in a bit yes. to talk about the, the big fight this weekend. Mm-hmm. But we do need to address uh, what you were doing yesterday in Chicago. It was a really cool thing uh, on a lot of different levels. Yeah, it really was. Uh, really, really had a great time getting uh, me and my wife getting our hands dirty a little bit in this project. Uh, at the end of Mike and Mike, ESPN was nice enough to give us a playground in our name built at, at a location to be uh, decided. And through Disney and then Disney through Kaboom, which is an incredible national yep. nonprofit, which this, by the way, was its 3,052nd playground built. They go into the communities where we, and we wanted it in the Chicago area. So they went to, uh, it was Maddox Elementary School in Burbank, Illinois. We're about four or five, 450 to 500 students. A lot of them walk to school, the kind of that community there to where that could be a great kind of hanging out point, place for kids during school and outside of school as well and their parents. So what a, what an incredible operation uh, that was run there. The, the great thanks obviously to Disney, Kaboom and ESPN, but the amount of volunteers that showed up in the community there revolving around that school to get this playground and sport court put up was unbelievable. Just incredible the work that goes involved and, and, and what, whatever, you know, we're looking for here, you know, in, in doing this, it all revolves around everybody who's there to help the kids. Right. You know, build that playground for the kids, give them something, a safe place to go to in that community there. And, uh, it was great, you know, so my wife and I, we were on sport court duty. Uh, with, with some of the other, uh, volunteers there. And we did, but I went and mixed a little bit of mortar just cause I did that with my dad. He was a bricklayer, uh, when I was growing up. I worked side jobs with him and immediately cut my knuckles and started bleeding all over the place. But, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? There's a big tent called a safety tent there that just kind of shook their head at me. Uh, but what well, a, you what showed, a, you showed up yeah. with an eye bruise from I, a dog. I, from a so, dog, I, mean, I know. You were sort of down before you got there. But what a, what a, Really, really cool thing to have your name associated with, uh, and then to be part of the bill, to be there and, and with all those volunteers. It was fantastic. And we'll put up some pictures of it done. Now, they do it in a day. I right. mean, they have it all preset, fantastic. everything kind of delivered. They're ready to go. Then everybody, we started at about 930 Chicago time. So, so central time and they finished probably about four in the afternoon. And the whole thing was done. That's awesome. I mean, really, really an incredible thing. So it was great for my wife and I to be part of that, and I really appreciate everybody coming together for that. Look, it was a nice tribute, a yeah. nice thing, and way to get your hands in the dirt and get it going. Yeah. So well, yeah. well done all the way around. So uh, lots to get into this hour, and let's start with what's trending, and what's trending is the Caps are no longer that team that's never won it. Finally, they win their first Stanley Cup in 43 years, taking down the Golden Knights 4-3 on the road in Game 5. And fittingly, Mike, they won it on the road. They won every postseason series uh, this playoff run on the road. One of only two teams, the other was the 91 Penguins, to be behind in every series they played in en route to winning the Stanley Cup. Real quickly, for the sec- uh, second on the other side, the players for the Golden Knights are certainly going to be disappointed at yes. the run that they had and they couldn't finish it up because as a player in any sport, you never know when you're going to get back and have another chance at a championship. It could be, it could be the only time for all those players or, or a number of those players. But as an organization and as a city, boy, how they have to be so ecstatic yes. for how their first year went and how successful it was uh, for them. Then on the side of Washington, I really think while – it didn't make it and they're still raising, you know, Lord Stanley Cup regardless. I think them going through the Pittsburgh Penguins and beating them because the Penguins had dropped them nemesis. so many times in the playoffs to go through them, finally beat them and then not exhale and say, okay, we finally got by them, but we still didn't finish off. They were able to finish it off. I think is, is something that especially the guys like Alex Ovechkin, who's been there since 05, will truly appreciate that they went through them to get there. Well, listen, as, as you were talking about this, they're showing the, the footage on ESPN uh, news of Alex Ovechkin. And just, this is what makes sports great. The sheer joy in his face. You know, 14 years in the making. Like, I can't believe it finally happened. It makes kids out of all of us. And is there any great picture of a hockey player better than a big burly guy with a big beard and two front teeth missing? Exactly right. Teeth cracked and missing. I mean, that that says hockey. It screams it right there. Uh, uh, By the way, real quickly, (laughs) this is, you know, remember when the, the Phillies won the 2009 World Series and their thing was, why can't us? Yeah. Oh, well, Ovi said this at the beginning of the year. We're not going to be sucked this year. <laughs> we're not, <laughs> we're not going to be sucked this year. Uh, 2008 for the Phillies. I'm sorry. The, the Yankees were in 2009. My Cliff, of course, corrected me of on course that. He sorry, did. Cliffy. My bad. Well, My he bad. was right. Yeah. We're not going to be sucked this year. Yeah. One of the great quotes of all time. He hit and that you know one. What? 
You guys were not suck. No, you were There's not. No question about it. But you will be sucking champagne out of the cup. Yeah, and sure will. He's already taken the cup through the MGM Grand oh, Hotel awesome. in Las Vegas. It's fantastic. Awesome. So congratulations to the Caps. Warriors are hoping to have that feeling tonight. Trying to become the first team to sweep an NBA final since 2007 when the Cleveland Cavs, led by LeBron James, were swept by the San Antonio Spurs, although a much younger LeBron and a much different team. It's interesting the sidebars from this because we all think it's a fait accompli that the yeah. Golden State's going to win this thing. So the two storylines that come out are those that think, will Kevin Durant go somewhere else to, as some say, to validate yes. himself as one of the great players by taking his own team there and not joining a championship team like that. And the, probably the biggest question, I don't think probably it is the biggest question, what's LeBron James going to do? You know, he has X a number of years. He's certainly way on the back nine of his career, even though he's still the top in the game uh, at what he does. Uh, he still wants championships. That's his goal every single year. Where does he think he needs to go, whether it's staying in Cleveland or somewhere else, to get that championship, especially against this Golden State team, which probably will be constructed like this at least for another year or two? Well, that that's the point, and he sort of already alluded to that when he had that uh, presser sound yesterday where he's like, well, yeah, what kind of basketball minds do you need to get together to try and beat this team? Look, nothing's been official yet, but... It certainly sounds like he's at least uh, thinking about the possibility of where can I go to get that elusive fourth championship. Speaking of championships, Justify looks to become the 13th Triple Crown winner tomorrow at the Belmont Stakes. He is the odds-on favorite, and the good news, Mike, he'll start from the one post where since 1905, 1905 right. a leading 23 horses have won. Yeah, it's a pretty good spot to be in. Again, the longest race and the, the happiest, without a doubt, of the Preakness was people from you know uh, associated with the Belmont that they got the chance for the Triple Crown. But the Preakness was something to watch in, in the fog. And now the Belmont, the longest of the races, so that certainly is going to be a question for Justify. There's supposedly, a, what, a 60% chance of rain, but we just heard uh, Marty Smith, who was there, say the, the meteorologist, some there, one that, that they trust, has said, you don't even have to worry about bringing your poncho, yeah. that there's not going to be any rain. Yeah, that so. was Bob Efford's son. Yeah. Oh, way. well, okay, there you go. But, you know, he's, you know, he's, he's you, been you, right but, before. But you, you wonder if, if you're, if you're associated with that horse, you want rain. I, I mean, agree. it proved to be pretty good in the, in the two, mu- in the two mudding, uh, tracks that you're were two up. for two. But now again, it's the longest. We'll see what that adds to this. Yeah, and again, we, we know that he's a mudder. We'll see if he can run in sunshine. Mudder was if a mudder. that's the case, it never gets old. No. By the way, Sports Center's done this great thing on their Twitter account. I love when they do this, but it always freaks me out. They've taken Ovechkin and they've morphed him over the 14 years. Ovechkin's 14 year journey to the oh cup, his rookie year, and the really? face changes. Like it's cool, but it's always like kind of freaks me out. When, when I did see the kind of when stuff. did the teeth change? Oh, uh, let's see. Let's go back. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Right about year five. Yeah. <laughs> year five, the teeth started to lose for Alexander Ovechkin. Oh, and of my. course, now he can buy new teeth. Because he's got, I would uh, say so. Stanley, well, he could have okay. done whatever he wants. But yeah, he's doing, he's doing pretty well. One of the things that we talked a lot about today, Mike, is the idea that Terrell Owens has decided he's going to skip right. his own Hall of Fame enshrinement ceremony. Uh, you know, I, I think he'll live to regret it. But you know what? It's his choice. He can do whatever he wants. But you have an interesting theory on this. Uh, I, I do. I and again, it's just a theory. As everybody sits here and tries to figure not as out. crazy, not as crazy as Junior's theory earlier on the day, which we don't have enough time to go oh, back but into. But did, my God, the rabbit hole he went down for the seventy sixes and the new GM post and, <laughs> yes. and why. Uh, a, a thought is: Listen, To is is well documented. The personality, kind of the reason he's been on a number of teams, hasn't been the greatest teammate at times. Never got in trouble off the field. No, but you know, within locker rooms, he certainly had some issues. And I wonder if part of this is a guy that loves attention, a guy that will put, obviously, a, a workout bench in his driveway and do curls, you know, yeah. while the media gathers around him, loves Next the question. attention, uh, is kind of, is this an attention-seeking thing? Deion Sanders, one of his peers, you know, Hall of Famer, uh, has already said he'll reach out and talk to him. Will others do that? Is that something he's looking for? Is even though this is th- this group, 2018 group, which includes, an, obviously, great players, is you know is he looking for attention uh, from this as well? And if he gets it, if a Ray Lewis who's in this class and Ray loves to try and help other people, is Ray going to call him uh, yeah. to try and say, hey, you don't want to do this? You know, it's a great honor. And will will that happen enough to where he will get that attention that he's seeking and then change his mind and go to the ceremony? I don't know. I have no idea. Is he mad that it took three times to get voted in? And if so, then I think he's if that's his reason. Then I think he's he's throwing darts at the wrong place because that's the voters. That's 100%. not the hall. Those are two separate things. The hall just 
has the ceremony, which is an incredible ceremony. They have nothing to do with him getting in to the Hall of Fame. But as my son pointed out, is, you know, Bill Polian has been very vocal, who's in the Hall of Fame, of saying he shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Others have said that as well. Does he feel not appreciated by some of his peers enough that says, I don't want to be there and share that with all of them? We don't know the reason why he's doing this. But I agree with you 1,000% that if he goes through with this and doesn't go somewhere down the road, somewhere, I don't know how long it will take, that he will regret that decision. Absolutely. And look, I get it. There are some people that said they don't think he's worthy, but they've said that about a ton of players. I mean, how thin is your skin if that's going to be the reason that you don't show up in what should be the greatest honor of your life? Yeah. I mean, let's just, let's just think about that. If, if that's your reason, and we don't know that that's the reason, but certainly you're, you're led to you think that's got to be part of this. Cause you know, he said in that article a couple of years ago, Chris Carter begged his way into the Hall of Fame. He purchased a gold jacket that he considered his Hall of Fame jacket when he didn't get in right. either the first time or the second time because he believed himself to be a Hall of Famer. So there's a level of petty here. Oh, let's not pretend like, question. like there isn't. But if, if, if you're offended by some of the people who said certain things about they don't think you belong there, and that's why you're not showing up, yeah. well, that's just dumb. I think so. One of the differences, though, of that is the others that have had to wait have waited because kind of in a line. It hasn't been because of off-the-field things, right. at least for the most part. With T.O., basically no one, no one doubted his credentials None. as a Hall of Fame player None. on the field. But it was always brought up about the type of teammate he was and that he was being punished, quote unquote, by the writers or voters in this to keep him out. So he was dragged through the mud in that way. And some of it's certainly brought on by himself. And we know he's, he wants the attention. We know he can be a bit petty. He's, he's shown all of that. So it's not like, Oh my God, I can't believe they're saying that he has shown that. So what direction is this going? You know, what was the impetus for this decision? That's something we don't know, but that's something every talk show is going to do out there. You're right. going to kind of speculate. And, and you know, he, he texted our own Marcellus Wiley and said, sometimes you have to do the wrong thing for the right reason. Yeah. Uh, and that sounds brilliant and esoteric and really thoughtful and introspective and all that stuff. But as our old friend Mark Schlereth used to say, what his dad told him, there's no right way to do the wrong thing. Yeah. And so they, if you want to be, you know, theoretical, there's the other side of it. At least from that statement, he, he acknowledges what he's doing is wrong. Correct. Right? By saying, you know, to, to, uh, um, that he's doing the wrong thing for the right reason. We don't know what that reason is. But it led us to a, another question that we stole, completely stole from Tucker. Tucker, we love you. Uh, who You're t- getting absolutely nothing but our uh, adulation. We are mentioning you. Yeah, Tucker. Um, Team Tucker. He, he he asked if we put it on at Golica Wingo so we make it look like it's ours. Um, <laughs> is there anything in this world sacred enough that no one would turn down an invitation to? Yeah. And you know what's come up the most? What? The Masters. Wow. That's come up the most. Well, you and, know, Mike, and, it, is, it is a tradition unlike any other. I know it is, but let's also be honest. You know, the way that the Masters conducts themselves sometimes, yeah. there are some people I'm sure that would turn that down. Uh, well, they all, if you're a golfer, you always say that. Yeah. And then you're like, yeah. And then if you get invited, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go. I would never. Really? What time is my tea time? So that, that can I bring? That's been the most, um, uh, um the Masters of Ma- Golik and Wingo's leadership retreat. I'm I do sorry, like what that. You, what did you say? Golik and Wingo's leadership retreat. Golik and Wingo leadership retreat. I love this invitation. Somebody says you wouldn't turn down. Bill Gates giving you 30 seconds to grab all you can from his personal safe. Well, that would be good. Yeah. That would be good. Or mm-hmm. Warren Buffett the same way. Uh, I would not turn that down. Oh, oh you know, actually, I would like to, just, I would like to talk to them for a while. Like, how did you think five steps ahead of everybody else? There's no shot I would do that. No, you're just, you're None. just going straight grab. Sammy crash, says, grab. this is more along my line. Sammy says a Hooters calendar photo shoot. Okay. Not a boy. Okay. Now, I, I will say if I'm going down those waters, I might choose a different calendar, but that's a separate issue entirely. Another one, you, you wouldn't turn down an invitation to the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Can confirm. But the Masters, over and over and over again. That's something. Uh, it, it's interesting because, uh, you know, we, I, I would, that would not have been the first thing that would have come to my mind. I would have thought, you know, a White House visit, right? Uh, all those but we've kind of had things. people, to, you know, turn yeah. that down. How about this? We're trying to think of something that nobody would turn it down. Yeah. Being asked to light the Olympic torch at the yeah. opening ceremony. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's, it, uh, having covered a couple of Olympics, that's a lot of fun. I mean, it is a, 
it is it is an experience that that uh, is way up there. But you know, the weird thing about this one and, and what makes it so bizarre is that you're going there to be celebrated. I mean, if there's what what has been the one knock on To everybody uh, is that well, you know, uh, it's always been about him. This weekend is a chance for it. To be all about it, literally, yeah. for it to be all about him. Because and with, with with the coverage that yeah. it's going to get. Because let's yeah. be honest, if he truly does have a celebration somewhere else, no, it's not getting covered. No, like you know, like the the no. Hall of Fame ceremony is going to be covered. Well, not but, even close. Yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I, I don't. I'm I may be speaking out of turn, but I don't think we as a company, as I'm going to be at the Hall of Fame in Canton, are going to be sending a satellite crew to go wherever To is. Yeah. I just don't think that's going to happen. Um, so we'll see. And again, I'm hoping that he changes his mind. I really hope because I think years I do from now well. he'll, he'll absolutely regret doing this mm-hmm. if he does it. Coming up, our guy Teddy Atlas is giving a title holder in a fight. No shot. Zero. Squat. Bupkis. Nothing. We'll ask him why next. I'm a one-trick pony. Literally. I show up at kids' parties and act cute. That's pretty much it. So excuse me for being bitter when Geico says not only could we save you money on car insurance, but we do more. Like give you 24-7 access online, over the phone, or even via our award-winning mobile app. Well, ooh la la. Aren't they multi-talented? <laughs> hey, I said organic carrots. <laughs> Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Golik and Wingo, we set the bar very low so yeah, we, we can do. step over it and then step over it again the next day. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Penzoil performance line. And the you know the conversation with Terrell Owens has got a lot of people talking, Mike, about what's going to happen uh, and what eventually will happen, uh, whether or not he decides to show up for uh, his Hall of Fame induction ceremony. A lot of conversation about that, but there's also this conversation that we haven't got into yet with Julian Edelman. Mm-hmm. I mean, we talked about the four-game suspension right. that he's facing. Uh, barring you know him uh, up- getting his appeal, appeal right. uh, turned in his favor, but there's another layer to this yeah. because in the off season, Edelman has worked closely with Tom Brady's trainer. Yes, he has Alex Guerrero of the TB12 fame, mm-hmm. uh, one of many players who a lot of people were going to and working with Alex Guerrero instead of spending time with the Patriots training staff, and that rubbed some people the wrong way, including Bill Belichick, who famously last season made sure that Alex Guerrero had his. Uh, sideline pass revoked. Right. Uh, and so there was some feathers being ruffled there. And he's been working out with Alex Guerrero at the TB12 Sports Therapy, Therapy Center. And this led to a statement that Guerrero had to right. read, which said, I've known Julian since his rookie year, and he's a phenomenal athlete who takes his training seriously. It's disappointing to hear today's news. Elite athletes sometimes work with multiple coaches and health professionals as part of their off-season training. Here at our facility, we take a natural, holistic, appropriate, and above all, legal approach to training and recovery for all of our clients. And anyone who suggests otherwise is irresponsible and just plain wrong. So in other words, Alex Guerrero's putting it out there, hey, we had had nothing to do with this, and they're probably right. Yeah, I mean, we have no reason to believe that's not the case. No reason to believe that, because there's a number of Patriots that worked out with them in the offseason, and that's random testing time, and we've heard of nobody else getting busted. However, it's just another layer in this this conflict, this little grading between Tom Brady and the TB12 people. Right. Not Tom Brady, it's going to be Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick. And the TB12 people. It's going to be interesting. Uh, Edelman, again, appealing. Not many win that appeal. We will see what happens there, but... As uh, they all finish up their OTAs and such, we have seen this team go to the Super Bowl last year without Edelman. We've seen him win a Super Bowl without Gronk. So while yeah. you go, wow, how are they going to be without him? Uh, oh, I think they'll be okay. Remember, yeah. they they did pretty well in the first four games without with Tom Brady when he was suspended. Three and one well, so. with a combination yeah. of Jimmy Garoppolo find and Jacoby Brissett. Okay, so we'll see what happens there going forward. Meanwhile, as we said, big fight this weekend mm-hmm. between Terrence Crawford and Jeff Horn on ESPN Plus from Las Vegas for the world welterweight title. And if we're talking boxing, there's only one guy we got to talk to. Yep. That's our guy. Uh, one of the greatest and most colorful guys you'll ever want to talk mm-hmm. to, and that's Teddy Atlas. Uh, Teddy joins us now. And, and Teddy, listen, Jeff Horn's a title holder, but I'm hearing you're giving him no shot to win? Do you believe in flying kangaroos? I just wonder. <laughs> I'm just curious. I don't. I don't believe in flying kangaroos. Okay, either do I. No chance. No chance. No chance for flying kangaroos. No chance for Jeff Horn from down on the, to do this. Unless there's a headbutt. And I'm not even being facetious right now and in any way being mockery with anything. But Horn does come in there with his head. He does get cut up. There is a rule in boxing. I don't know what their rules they're using in Vegas exactly tomorrow night. But after four rounds, if there's a cut, and they don't stop it before four rounds. It goes to 
the score cuts. So is that a possibility? Is that a X factor? Is that, you know, one of those things way out there that, that he could get ahead early and then, you know, the fight gets stopped before Crawford gets to him? I guess that could happen. But other than that, no, there's no chance. Crawford, the one thing that people are pointing at if they want to point to Horn, is that Horn's the naturally bigger guy. He is. He's a welterweight his whole career. And, of course, Crawford, with his greatness, is going to his third division, weight division. He went from lightweight to junior welterweight. He dominated all of them, and now he's going to welterweight. But guess what? I got news for you for the Horn people out there that are hanging their hat on that he's the bigger guy. To me, that's an illusion because Crawford has to he, – he's got the skeleton. He's got the frame to fill into a well to wait. He's longer, he's taller, he's stronger. For me, you know what that equates to? He's bigger. And even more important, he's better. Horn does a lot of things wrong. He reaches in, he goes back straight. When you do those things with a top fighter, and Crawford for me is number two pound for pound in the world, and you could flip-flop those. Him and Lomachenko, number one and two. You know, it's kind of like, what's your taste? Do you like the Kevin Durant? Do you like LeBron James? Do you like finesse? Do you like power? Crawford's got everything, and he's got power. I think that Crawford gets rid of Horn within six rounds. The only thing, the only thing that I'll qualify a little bit that is stretched out even to six rounds, quite frankly, is that Crawford is dealing with his longest inactivity period of his career, 10 months. So there could be a little rust, a little adjustment early on where Horn one of his best physical attributes is that he's got pretty good legs. So I don't know how big that ring is. It's probably got to be as big as Brisbane for him <laughs> to really be able to use, <laughs> to use the, I know everyone loves everything big in Australia. Well, they better hope that it's a really big ring. If Horn uses his legs early on, and again, Crawford's a little rusty from the 10 months in activity, maybe he lasts to the middle of the fight. I'm saying six rounds, baby. Yeah, we got to have you stop sitting on the fence in these opinions, uh, <laughs> Kenny. <laughs> so let the me, best. so oh, let me ask yeah. you this, you know, it, we, you hear in boxing sometimes with a champion that along the way you protect them a little bit of some of the fights. So here, unless it's a half to fight, are, are Horns people doing him wrong by making this be his first title defense about with a guy that nobody thinks he can beat? Well, the promoter, the promoter's thrown him to the wolves. I won't sit in the fence. I'll be consistent. I will not sit in the middle of the fence. Yeah, the promoter's, you know, he, he put him in there with Pacquiao when Pacquiao was at the, I didn't think he won a Pacquiao fight, but when you fight in an outdoor arena in Australia, down under with 55,000 people, guess what? Sometimes they vote for you. And you know what? They voted for him. And Pacquiao was on his way out. He's a diminished fighter. So all of a sudden, he was, it made sense. He could make a little money over there. He was undefeated. You know, he was the new kid in town, so to speak. And now, guess what? Gig is up. Time is up. You know, those things, they don't have long shelf lives. Now the promoter, promoters, they can be heartless. <laughs> now it's time, you know, to push, push it up, put them in there, you know, and like I said, uh, you're on your own, baby. You know, <laughs> now it's time to cash out. Now it's time to take Crawford, the promoter's top fighter, one of his top fighters, to take Crawford and say, hey, I'm going to give you a title. And that's what they're doing. Look, you still got to go in there and earn it. Don't get me wrong. Anything could happen. You still got to go in there and throw punches. But they're basically giving Crawford. And Crawford doesn't have to have anything given to him but they because he's good enough. But they're giving Crawford a title. Yes, you want the truth or you want some BS? We want the oh, truth. We got the truth. We need the <laughs> truth, Teddy. I can promise you that. By the way, I also can, can you handle the truth? Come on, can you handle it? I need you on that wall, Teddy <laughs> Atlas. I just want you to know that. But here's here's another question I got Thank for you. you. The Triple G uh, Canelo Thank Alvarez fight is off again. What do you make of what's going on there? Yeah, listen, there's a PED problem there. I mean, at least, at least people, you know, <laughs> think they have pretty much proof that Alvarez has been on PEDs. You know, they, they suspend them. The Nevada Commission, you know, they were forced to do something. These commissions do nothing, but they were forced to do something. The whole world was watching. You guys were watching. We were talking about it. So they had to suspend them. Uh, listen, the money, the money is still there. I wouldn't say that that fight's gone yet. 
Because when there's money involved, everyone said that Bob Arum and Don King years ago, you know, they hate each other. You know, two vicious guys never get together. All of a sudden there was money. Guess what? They got together. You know, so in boxing, <laughs> when there's money there, don't lose faith. You know what I mean? Just keep your hand on your wallet. I mean, you, you should do that. But don't lose faith that the fight won't get made. So eventually it might get made. But right now, I think with everything going on, with the PED speculation, uh, also with, with time moving forward, you got to remember, Triple G, Golovkin, he's not a spring chicken. You know, the other guy is, what, 26 years old, Canelo, 27 years old. Golovkin, what's he, 35, 36 years old? He can't sit around. You know, he's, he's got to move forward. But is that fight completely gone because the money, with the money potential still being there? No, it's not. For now, yes. Teddy, you're the best. And you know what? There was no BS in any of that. That's why we need you on that wall. That's why we need you to. talking about these fights. Again, you can see the fight tonight, uh, or Saturday night, rather, 930 on ESPN+. Plus. Teddy, always a pleasure, man. Thanks for being Thanks, with Teddy. us. Thanks, Teddy. Golik and we go here. It's time for Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. And the Straight Talk is right now we're surrounded by greatness. Yes, because we are. as you can see in the studio, Rascal Flats is here. Gary Laveau, Jay DeMarcus, Joe Don Rooney. What's guys, up, thanks for being here this morning. How are you? Good. Thanks for having so me. So the, the first thing I laughed at is these guys don't have the, the earpieces in, yeah. so they couldn't hear when we were rejoining with one of their songs. I right. said, oh, you guys don't have an earpiece in. We're playing one of your songs. And Gary goes, is it a good one? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously? I, I, it, I said 16. Is it 14? Fourteen? Do you guys know number one hits? That's seventeen. I, it's seventeen. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's yeah. seventeen. We're not, we're not we really don't count, know. Oh, oh, probably you're... around seventeen. <laughs> probably <laughs> exactly. Well, then, listen. If you don't know, go with a hundred. I mean, you know, yeah, right. why, why, shoot, why shoot low, man? Like, go high. Go big or go home here. <laughs> we don't want everybody to know we've been out that long. That's also oh, true. Okay. trying to stay young. Well, look, look. You're on the wrong show then. <laughs> so, you've got you've got granddads in training here. <laughs> so just like. When I hear Hall of Fame speeches, we all know the numbers, the number one hits and all the great songs and all that. What I love hearing from the Hall of Famers is how they got there. So, so how did you, 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 you look at your guys, how you, there's founded and formed. One right. says Columbus, the other says, uh, what is it? Uh, um, Oklahoma. uh, fiddle and steel yeah. guitar steel. in Nashville. Oh, yeah. So, so how did it all get going? Well, uh, Gary and I grew up together. We're cousins. A lot right. of people still don't know that. And then, uh, Joe Don and I, I met when no we, idea. yeah, Joe Don's just finding that out for the first time. <laughs> it's amazing. What you learn? Wait, wait, yeah. Yeah. You're just learning this now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm playing the breaking news. Yeah. We have breaking news here. I'm going to learn another life. I'm going to learn So, and then Joe Don and I met, uh, when we played together with Shelly Wright in her band for a couple of years. And we started playing. Shelly Wright, single white female? Yeah, exactly right. Walk off. Thank you and good night, everybody. That's a mic drop moment right there. There you go. Just first. Wow. And so um, we started playing together in some local clubs, the Fiddle mm -hmm. and Steel Guitar Bar in Nashville, Tennessee. People started coming out and seeing us, and we sort of developed this grassroots following that uh, followed us all over town. And we got signed <laughs> about six months later. And honestly, the biggest thing in our career that we've been able to do is get our hands on some incredible songs that have resonated with people wherever they are in their lives. I'd yeah. say. Uh, and then, and then no being able to be on... <laughs> Go look, Mingo. We're we're here. I mean, this is this. Oh is yeah, the, this is it. This, uh, is, it. this is making it. Huh? it but that's the ultimate of just, just being Gary. nice. Absolutely. So now we've had two lies. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Because earlier uh, he said hope was a good. One. I said, well, they're all good. And yeah. He's like, yeah. Give me grief. And now he said, this is the pinnacle. So we've had two. We've had two absolute yeah, lies yeah. here on uh -huh. Golik and Wingo, which again fits in, fits in conjunction with the show. Now, you guys uh, touring? You're in Hartford or somewhere tonight? We are. Yeah, tonight yeah. tonight yeah. is actually the, the, the kickoff of uh, the Back to Us tour. So okay. we're pumped about it. We've got Dan and Shay mm. and uh, uh, Carly Pierce. Uh, you guys didn't think we made a special trip up here for this. Yeah, no. I was going to say. I was about to say, you, you want your money back. Yeah, yeah. there's a reason that we're here. In yeah. 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 And, and they both won awards the other night. Uh, we were there at the CMT Awards, so we're pumped for them. And tonight, we're going to kick it off here. Yeah, Dan and Shay, they're, they're, they're jumping up, aren't they? I mean, they're okay. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. all right. I mean, they're not yeah. good. I mean, yeah. they're okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're all right. right. Yeah. It's their early 20s. It's not a fluke yeah. that they're on they're tour like, with us. Yeah. It's, you know. I, I, I always wondered. Like when I would get ready for a season, what an athlete gets ready, and I, and I have a, a connection here about athlete entertainer. When we get ready for like training camp in the season, do you guys do as when you get ready for the tour? How early does it start before the tour starts of getting together and going over stuff? What is your like? 
pre-tour things consist of. It has to be of. much like the athletes. We need two days. <laughs> we need two, two days. days. Yeah, we yeah. started going yeah. to bed about 4 a.m. Yeah. instead of 6 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of burpees. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we kind of cut back the drinking just a touch. Uh, no, seriously, touch. We, we start about a month before the tour starts and get a, you know, we got a, a good, I don't know, nine, 90 people in row with us nowadays. But, but we get in and start with our set, just get a, a set list going and kind of work from there. And after 18 years of this, it's like it's kind of hard to reconfigure a show right. after all these years in, in a hundred different ways. So we got with a really, a really great arranger this year to kind of help us, you know, do some different arrangements with the with the hit songs that that uh, the fans love, and it's it's really a fun show this year. Well, yeah. it, it's they're always fun shows. Again, Rascal Flatts here with us in studio as they're getting set to kick off their tour uh, here in Connecticut. We're happy to be here. And one of the things that we've been talking about today. Uh, is the idea that Terrell Owens is not going to go to the Hall of Fame and enshrinement ceremony, which we find very odd. And it led to this question, is there any event or invite you would turn down? First of all, you should have turned down this one. Yeah. This is <laughs> no, no. your careers. This is the pinnacle. This, this is what we've it. been waiting for. Oh, we didn't know yeah. years, guys. Is, is there any invite that you would, that you guys would say, yeah, no, I'm good? Or, or are you guys like, hey, it's all, Pro- it's probably all good? Probably not. We're, yeah. We're, yeah, we're easy like Sunday morning. We're <laughs> there, going. There yeah. you go. Yeah, that's the <laughs> way to be, right? Holler that's a good way to go. And we're yeah. there. And Gary, as big as, as you guys have got, I remember, uh, uh, Kenny Chesney said that this one time when he was going, leaving a concert and, and going, and all these trucks were leaving. Yeah, like a ton of trucks, and and he was like, "Wow, look at that!" And someone said, "Well, those are all yours. That yeah. all belong. That's all you." Yeah. So as you guys have grown to the massive, you know, greatness you guys are, does that ever hit you? Or any of you that wow, look at look at all How that did we get here? goes into yeah. this. I think I mean, when it, we look at our end year financials and see all the money, <laughs> yeah. going yeah. Out, yes, yeah. it hits I, us big I, time. I mean, because at one point we're we were running like twenty two semis and thirteen or fourteen buses. That's crazy. And, and then we get know, smart. And yeah, and then we're just back. like, because see, that's what you kind of got to do as you're you're climbing up because you don't have the hits to sell all the tickets. Right. So it's got to be production. And then if you're blessed enough to have you know, continue to keep having hits, then the songs kind of sell it, and then you can kind of keep going back down Yeah, truck-wise. But, yeah, you know, we sit out there every single day in our buses and we sit out there and it's like, look at the line of people. Can you believe that they've, they're have they still coming out to yeah. see us every day? It is an amazing gift, and they're the best employers in the world, and we give them 110% at 920 p.m. every it, single night. It's, crazy. it's awesome. You know, the, the, the fans we started off with now have, Kids of their own, they're married, got kids. Now they bring right. their kids to the show. It's wow, like, wow I got two de- two generations of, if not three now, yeah. of a career coming out to the show. That, that's amazing. that's very cool. By the way, we have a bus now, but no one follows it. At no, all. no, no, it, no. It just it no. wanders around in the darkness. <laughs> yeah, it's going to get repossessed. But I do have to ask you guys: as Rascal Flats here with us in studio, uh, you guys are talking about uh, the the places you started in Nashville. There's going to be a party next year in Nashville. The NFL draft yes. is coming. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. listen, I we will be there for the draft. I do all three days of the draft on the television side. It is so much fun. What is what has Nashville's reaction been to the, to the news that hey, the draft is coming? I mean, we just up. can't believe it, man. Yeah. We are on top of the world. Our our city is sick with Titans. I mean, yeah. so we are we are big supporters of the NFL. We love college football, pro football. As a matter of fact, I hate this time of year when there's no football. No football. Yeah. I mean, it's right. just yeah. horrible. Bleak. So they're they're Crushing. really really excited. Tell me about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know. <laughs> but we're going to want to find stuff off the beaten path. I know. Yeah. Obviously, there's Broadway where oh, yeah. where everything is. Yep. But we're going to definitely want to find that off the beaten path. Well, now if a country artist that you like, they all have their own bars. On, on oh, Broadway now, yeah. so like you, can, that. you can go to Blake Shelton's place, Jason Aldean's, Dirks Bentley, Luke Bryan. They're all right everywhere there. else but ours. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so real yeah, quick, what the hell, guys? We're, we're, What's we have, going on? Well, you can go to Stamford, Connecticut, and then <laughs> go to Rascal <laughs> Flats the Restaurant. There you go. Yeah, so you can go eat there and you can drink in Nashville. Have barely a minute left. Athletes always want to be entertainers. I would love to, I, to to have people just sit up there and sing your song is amazing. Right. If you were to be an athlete, what, scary start with you and go around real quick. What what sport would it be? What would you want to be a star in? Oh, I'd, I'd want to be a star at Ohio State. Oh, wait, really? Yeah. Oh, H. Okay, oh, there you go, baby. There you go. Mm, uh, golf. There I'm you go. Up with golf. Oh, really? It's about ten, ten strokes away from maybe being. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm forty-seven <laughs> strokes away. Yeah. So and about yeah. twenty <laughs> years too late. But that, that sounds I'm great. Just, but as we all know, that, those are ten big uh, strokes. Ten big <laughs> strokes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Those are ten big strokes. I, I wanted to be a wide receiver in the NFL when I was yeah. a kid. That's all I wanted to do. I yeah. loved playing football. Blew my knee out. Jay, so. if you could have anybody, any quarterback on the planet throw you a pass, who would it be? Oh gosh, that's a tough one. 
Uh, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, there you go. And it'd be great to be a wide yeah, receiver one. now. You're not allowed to get hit over the exactly. middle. Anymore. So you should try out. It's <laughs> probably going to work out for you. Well, if if T.O. and I could go to the same team, <laughs> oh, there, there, the same there, there you go. The Batman and Robin, just like yeah. him and, and uh, Chad Ocho Cinco. Yeah, yeah. That, that, makes that. all the sense in the world uh, to me. Exactly. Right. Maybe that's how we get him to come to the whole thing. There we go. That's the way we do it. Rascal Flats with us in studio, guys. Thanks so much for being here. Check out the show. They're awesome. They have seven thousand number one. 